Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the ninth meeting of the committee for 2019. Can I ask you to please ensure all mobile devices are switched to silent and put away? And can I welcome John Finney joining the committee this morning? Agenda item one is Children Equal Protection from Assault Scotland Bill. And this is our final evidence session on the Children Equal Protection from, Scot from Assault Scotland Bill. Can I welcome Marie Todd, Minister for Children and Young People, supported by Simon Stockwell, Head of the Family Law Unit, Sarah Meanley, Family Law Unit, Scott Matheson, Scottish Government Legal Directorate, and Maria Gray, Parenting, Play and Baby Box Team, Scottish Government. You're all very welcome this morning. Minister, can I invite you to make an opening statement of up to five minutes, please? Thank you, convener, and thank you for inviting me to give evidence on the general principles of this bill today. The Scottish Government supports the removal of the defence of reasonable chastisement in Mr Finney's bill. We support the removal of this defence for a number of reasons. We believe that children should have the same legal protection from assault as adults, and the bill will achieve this. Scotland will lead the way in the UK in providing this protection for children. As I'm sure you're aware, um, the Welsh Government have just introduced their bill. Internationally, removing the defence would be consistent with international treaties, best practice and with human rights. Removing the defence reflects the growing body of evidence which indicates that physical punishment of children is both ineffective and harmful. The bill will bring helpful clarity to the law relating to the use of physical punishment and it will send a clear message that it's not necessary for parents and carers to use physical punishment um, to discipline their children. Our aim is for Scotland to be the best place in the world for our children to grow up and this bill will contribute to that aim. The Scottish Government recognises that, there's no, that there is a need to raise awareness about the effect of the bill and to provide support for parents and organisations on the change it will bring. And that could build on um, existing work underpinned by our national parenting strategy. It's not about telling parents how to parent. We'll continue to support parents and to provide information about positive parenting. Resources are tight at the moment, however we formed an implementation group which is considering what steps would need to be taken if the bill should be enacted by Parliament and that includes what would need to be done on public awareness. We'll take on board points raised by members of the implementation group and by this committee on steps to raise awareness and I welcome questions from the committee. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Um, you've already uh, stated there the Scottish Government's support for the um, principles of the bill. Can I ask you um, why you think public opinion is, is so mixed on this, this topic? Well, we support the removal of the defence of reasonable chastisement because we believe that children should have the same legal protection as adults. And in fact, support for that principle in public is extremely strong. About 92% of people ask that question agree that children should have the same protection from assault as adults. Only 2% of the population would oppose that. This committee received quite a, a, a body of evidence from individuals that, that were opposed to it. Why do you think that is? So I think this, um, I mean, I think you also heard evidence from people who said this goes to the very heart of how we were parented ourselves, how we um, are as parents, and I think it's a, it's a difficult issue. But I think there has been, you know, since the last time we discussed this in this parliament, there's been reasonable evidence of a trend towards um, understanding that physical punishment is ineffective, understanding that it's not um, a, a useful parenting strategy and understanding that there are alternatives which are much more effective. And do you think this bill can help to change how parents discipline their children then? Certainly, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, Oliver Mandel. Thank you, uh, convener. Uh, Minister, I wondered um, how uh, you felt about the vehicle that's been used to sort of introduce this measure um, and particularly um, although I'm, I'm not sure you know, how closely you've looked at the law in New Zealand, uh, but whether or not, in that context, this is the this is the correct way um, of, of of making this legal change. Um, certainly, I, I do think this is an appropriate way of making this legal change. I've followed um, the evidence sessions at the committee and I know that yourself and Conservative colleagues have asked questions on this a number of times. Um, in Ireland and New Zealand, um, they've made a 
assault and an offence in statute, and in Scotland, assault's a common law offence. I don't think it makes much difference in practice. Um, the aim of Mr Finney's bill is to remove a defence, and you know the, the, the relevant offence in Scotland is a common law offence. Um, I, I guess my, my point, I'm just putting it as, as sort of openly uh, to, today as I can, is that I, I, I think violence against children is wrong. Um, I, I don't think it's to be encouraged. I don't think it's a good thing. Uh, but what worries me about just removing the defence, um, and I think that's where we see the difference between the 92% you're pointing to and the 75% uh, figure that I think comes out of surveys, is just there seems to be this grey area uh, between uh, what people would see as being assault um, and what they would see you know, as parents sort of acting sort of probably in the best interest of the child. Um, or uh, some confusion around what the tests and thresholds would be. And in New Zealand, uh, their, their law sets out a number of situations in which it, it would be OK to use force. Um, for example, um, where it was, uh, it, was it prevented uh, or minimised the immediate uh, harm to the child or another person, um, or where it would prevent a criminal act uh, from taking place. Do you think things like that should be considered? Uh, by the committee or as the bill develops? So I, I think that this approach brings a very helpful clarity to the legislation and I think that actually rather than increasing confusion, um, parents will be clearer on what they can and can't do. There will be a very clear um, message in this legislation that physical punishment of children in Scotland is, is not an acceptable strategy. And I'm very pleased to hear of Conservative support for that principle that physical punishment is... is so if, if, if that's your position, I, I just, I mean, it really is just one final question. In, in that case, then, you know, will, will parents legally be allowed uh, to physically punish their children in certain circumstances if this bill passes? Well, the defence of re reasonable chastisement. You know, it's a, it's a sort of yes or no. Do, uh, will there still be circumstances in Scots law where parents will be permitted to physically punish their children if this bill is passed? Do you want to? If I could perhaps uh, perhaps try and assist with that. It's not the it's not the role of the Scottish government to uh, determine in advance what the outcome of a particular uh, criminal case should be. That will be for the for the courts. The decisions as to whether or not to prosecute will be for the prosecution authorities to take independently of of ministers. What this bill is is doing is removing a a, a defence. It's a defence which has been formed part of the common law of Scotland for um, a, a very long time and has been modified by the statute. Uh, it is a defence to uh, a common law crime of, of assault. There are other defences which the Scots law recognises in relation to uh, crimes in, including assault. So self-defence, for example, is uh, another common law defence. Other, other jurisdictions may have traditions of legislating specifically um, and in having a codified criminal law that is generally not the, the approach that Scots criminal law has so in in terms of you know what the what the particular outcome might be in a particular case that's going to depend on the facts and circumstances of the case and it, it, it's not really a, a, something the Scottish government can say in advance what the outcome would be um, but I, I guess if the the aim is to provide increased clarity for parents or clarity for parents, then surely setting out some thresholds or tests uh, or, you know, in, in, in statute providing some guidance uh, as, as to where, you know, where those tests would be met, surely that would, surely that would be, be helpful. Um, and secondly, you, you, you talk about the defence, um, but my, my understanding, you know, I'm, I'm happy to accept it could be wrong, is that the presence of a defence uh, you know, often influences a decision whether to prosecute or not. So therefore, removing a defence opens up the possibility of prosecution for behaviour that might previously not have been prosecuted. Is that, is that right or wrong? I don't know that I could go much beyond saying that in circumstances where, uh, under the law at the moment, uh, parents or other people who'd be uh, sort of exercising a, a similar role uh, who'd currently be able to rely on the defence of reasonable chastisement simply won't be able to do that and yes the prosecution authorities would no doubt take that into account as to whether or not 
uh, taking forward a prosecution would result in a um, the, the, the necessary likelihood of a successful conviction on whether or not the prosecution would be in the public interest. Um, and on the thresholds question, and then that's, that's be done, convener. On the thresholds question, do you not think it would be reasonable to, to, to set out thresholds to provide clarity for parents as to what, what type of behaviour would be captured <coughs> by assault and what, what, what wouldn't? Any, any guidance, of course, on prosecutorial matters would no, be for the, no, no. for the Lord Advocate and for the Crown and not, not, not for the Scottish Government. But, but, but for the Scottish Parliament, when it passes legislation, do you not think it would help provide clarity for parents, as we do in other, uh, as we do in other criminal legislation, to set out clearly in black and white in the statute the tests that you'd <coughs> expect to be met in terms of the threshold uh, for, for where, uh, you know, where, where uh, the use of force by parents would, would, would constitute assault. Do you think honest, that would provide a lot more clarity? To be honest, I think you'd probably end up with something quite close to what you've got at the moment, really, and that's obviously exactly what Mr Finney's bill is trying to remove. It's trying to uh, take away the uh, defence of reasonable chastisement and make it clear to parents, as the Minister was saying, that physical punishment was wrong. If you added um, material back into the bill, I think you'd end up with something quite close to what you've got just now, which obviously would be directly contrary to what the bill is trying to achieve. Hamilton. Thank you, Convener. Um, good morning, Minister, and good morning to your officials as well. Thank you for coming to see us today. Um, I just want to uh, explore through a couple of questions about rights, but then I'd like to test some of the arguments against the bill that we've had with you. Um, the First Minister made a commitment in her programme for government speech uh, to incorporate the principles of the UNCRC, and you know uh, you have my support in that. Could we incorporate the principles of the UNCRC without this bill? Um... I mean, I guess that's a little bit of a theoretical question because we're supporting this bill and we're incorporating the principles of the UNCRC. But, but I, it wasn't a trap, I promise you. It was, um, I, I think the UNCRC have obviously um, referenced the fact that we still have allow for physical punishment um, in their concluding observations every time they visit us. So yeah. I, I guess it was a loaded question to say, is it compatible to still allow physical punishment in the home and incorporate the UNCRC to an internationally recognised standard? So I think that removing this defence is absolutely in line with international treaties and our obligations and with international best practice. As I said in my opening statement, um, many countries in the world have already done this. We in Scotland like to lead the way in human rights, as you know. Um, in fact, we're, we're following on this issue. Thank you. Um, and do you recognise any conflict between children's rights as they are prescribed in the UNCRC and so-called parents' rights, um, the right to, to family life or anything like that, that we've heard some evidence about from people who don't support the bill? Yeah, I, I listen carefully to that evidence and I can understand um, their concern. But um, no, I don't see a conflict um, between the rights of children. I, I think that it's very, I mean, th th this bill, as I said, brings a very helpful clarity that children have, um, th th that physical punishment of children is not acceptable in, in Scotland. And I think that uh, there isn't a, a conflict between the rights of the child and the rights of um, family in this issue particularly. Thank you. Um, so moving on to test some of the, very briefly test some of the arguments we've heard again the bill with you. Um, one of the um, things that has come out in a number of sessions is the suggestion that uh, by removing the right to physical punishment, or rather the legal defence which allows physical punishment, um, we could actually be endangering some children, that sometimes physical punishment is required um, to prevent harm, whether that's pulling down a boiling pan of water off the stove or running out into traffic. Are you concerned that by removing that sort of tool from parenting that we actually do put children at risk of hurting themselves. No, and I, and I watched carefully the evidence that was given on this, and I would agree with some of the answers that you've had already, that actually physical punishment isn't necessary to prevent harm in those circumstances. The usual strategy would be to put yourself as a parent between the child and the harm, and to hold the child close. You don't need to punish them in those circumstances. And in fact, some of the evidence would suggest that punishing a child in that circumstance um, adds to their confusion and does not help them to learn a lesson. And, and by extension, um, an argument that came out of that discussion was around adults with learning disabilities. Some adults with learning disabilities never have a mental age beyond childhood. Um, is it incongruous that we should allow 
currently allow one form of discipline for people who have a mental age of three who are three and a different form of discipline for people who are 24 but still have a mental age of three? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, again, that's an interesting argument. I don't think um, there, there are, uh, and I think, again, in, the, in your earlier evidence that came out, somebody put forward the proposal that would you use physical punishment to prevent um, an elderly person with dementia from crossing into the road and putting themselves in harm's, harm's way. That would be inconceivable for, for most of us. So um, why would that be a, a strategy that you would use with a small child? It, I, I think... Um, the evidence is that physical punishment harms children and that body of evidence is growing. The evidence is that it's an ineffective strategy for discipline and that body of evidence is growing. I think the time is absolutely right to take this step and I think that the argument that you can prevent harm using physical punishment is weak. Thank you. Moving on to the uh, idea of um, the impact it has on violence, the use of violence as a tool of sanction or um, vengeance or, or, or punishment, rather. Uh, we've had conflicting evidence on this from panels. On the one hand, we've had the police and people like Scottish Women's Aid saying that for as long as we allow violence in the home, um, it will, we won't be able to eradicate domestic violence and it will spill over into our streets as learned behaviour in our children. Where on the other hand, we heard last week from Professor Lars Alia from America that, um, that actually he cites the case of Sweden that suggests that the, since the removal of smacking in Sweden in 1979, we've seen a huge increase in assaults and indeed rapes by um, juveniles and that he suggests that that's because they've never been taught to accept the answer no. Um, where do you sit in that sort of divide? So I think the evidence you had from the American professor last week wasn't at all convincing. And, um, I mean... <laughs> There, there, there was no causal association with the two findings. You could equally say that since 1979, when the defence was removed, there's been a massive increase in road traffic accidents, which there also has been. Um, there is no link between those two things, I think. I thought the most convincing evidence that you've seen and the body of evidence is from the health professionals, so from the paediatrician who gave evidence here, the American Academy of Paediatrics, and um, our own... Um, body of paediatricians in the UK and also from public health that in fact um, it is harmful um, to use physical punishment with, with children. I think that is it Lucy Reynolds who gave evidence to the committee um, was very clear that children learn by mimicry and she gave very um, clear evidence around um, children witnessing violence and then using violence themselves in play. So um, I think that you know, the, there are always in science um, voices um, who challenge evidence, but I'm very clear that the body of evidence supports, is supportive that um, using physical violence, using physical punishment in children it leads to more um, likelihood of violence um, in old, older age. And in fact, there's you know, quite a strong link between um, having been physically punished and behavioural problems later on. Thank you for that. Um, we heard on Sky, um, and indeed from some lines of questioning from Gordon Lindhurst in, in the various evidence sessions we had, that um, smacking is regarded, or physical punishment is regarded almost as an article of faith in some aspects of Christianity, um, that it is, um, there are passages in scripture which suggest that that is normal parenting and, and is part of the lived faith of, of Christians. Um, is, is this a, an assault on their right uh, to parent their children in the way that their faith suggests they should? I don't think so. I mean, I listened with some um, interest to the evidence that was given by the various faith groups, and there isn't consensus there. Even within the Christian faith, there doesn't seem to be consensus. The Church of Scotland and the Quakers very um, strongly support this bill. So um, I, I don't think you can put forward the argument that it prevents people from, from um, partaking in their religious practice. The, the evidence is growing that smacking is harmful to children and that it's an ineffective form of discipline. And I think it's right that we bring clarity to this situation um, in this way. And I think this is an effective tool for bringing clarity to this situation. Thank you. No further questions. Thank you. Annie Wells. Thank you, Convener. Good morning, um, Minister. I've just got one question for you. We've heard from quite a lot of um, other witnesses 
and they believe that this bill shouldn't criminalise parents. Do you feel the same? So I think the evidence in other um, countries who have introduced this type of measure is that it doesn't lead to a large number of prosecutions. Um, so in Scotland, as you know, we take a GERFEC approach, getting it right for every child. So we are very keen to um, provide support to families at an early stage from the right person at the right time. I, I suspect, um, if anything, this will lead to increased support for families, not increased uh, criminalisation. Thank you, Convener Ritz. Okay, um, Fulton McGregor. <coughs> Thanks, Convener, and uh, good morning, Minister and, and, and your officials. Um, I just wanted to follow up in, in two um, uh, lines of questioning that have been uh, following throughout the, the, the evidence session. And the first is around um, the current child protection processes. Um, I think there was some concern uh, when we first started taking evidence that perhaps, um, uh, as Annie Wells asked, there would be a criminalisation of parents and also there would be um, some sort of increase in, in, in child protection uh, processes and more interference, if you like, from the state and, and families' lives. But we heard very good evidence from both the police and social work that they didn't feel that would be the case. Have, has the government thought about the, the implications in terms of the child protection process? Um, yes, and, and, and like the Police and Social Work Scotland, we don't think there is going to be a huge impact on current practice at the moment. As, as I said, we already take a getting it right for every child approach in Scotland. We're keen to offer support to families and to get support in, uh, um, from the right people at the right time at an early stage um, to, to, to support um, families to parent well. So, so in, that, in that context, you don't envisage that um, there would be an increase in child protection um, measures been taken, child protection registrations as a direct result of, of this bill alone? I don't think so, but we do have the implementation group who will look at these issues, um, which does involve um, Social Work Scotland and Police Scotland. Um, if there are issues which arise during the course of this bill and that we need to pay attention to, we will, but I don't think so, no. And, and on the counter side of that, if there is to be some sort of rise in the uh, in child protection registrations and, and being used, is it, is, it, is it safe to say that, that, that you know it could be an argument that that is because um, there's earlier identification of children at risk? Well, as I said, this is the approach we take anyway in Scotland. You know, we are very keen to identify children who, who might be at risk and put, you know, offer support at an early stage so that things do not deteriorate for them. Our, our approach in Scotland is um, you know, very much predicated along those lines. Getting it right for every child is about getting the right help from the right person at the right time, ideally at an early stage before, you know, to avert crisis. Thanks very much. Um, <clears throat> the other question was something that first uh, was raised in, in Sky, and it was something that, that I have to say I hadn't actually particularly thought about um, uh, beforehand, and it was evidence that was given um, to us that, it, that this bill, if, it, if implemented, could dis be, have a disproportionate effect <clears throat> pardon me, on families who are vulnerable and maybe already have agencies involved. Is that something you followed through the evidence sessions, hey, Minister? And has the government got any thoughts on that? Yeah, I did, I did see that um, evidence given. Um, I don't think there's um, any particularly strong evidence that that would be the case. Um, as I said, the approach in Scotland um, very much is around getting it right for every child. So the, the, um, where there is already state involvement with families, the um, aim is to support those families um, and to um, improve the situation for the children. Thank you, um, Convener, and good morning, Minister, and good morning to your um, officials. My first question follows on quite nicely from the question that's just been put by um, Fulton McGregor, um, and it's something that's been raised throughout the evidence sessions. Are you aware of any evidence that would suggest that children from specific equality groups are more likely to experience physical punishment? So I, I have looked um, for evidence of that, and I would say that there's not particularly solid evidence um, with which you know which we could draw conclusions on that issue. There is some um, international evidence, but I'm not sure how applicable it is in Scotland and in the in the Scottish situation. 
Okay, that that's helpful. Um, and I mean, when you say there's no um, solid. Um, evidence. Obviously, if, if this um, bill is passed, the government will be doing some um, awareness raising. And I know other members want to look at the, the kind of broader um, terms of, of what awareness raising the, the government will be doing. But will, will you be tailoring the, the awareness raising and support that you offer so that it would include families that either have social work involvement or may have specific equality groups of children within them? Absolutely. We would be keen to ensure that all families are, are aware. Um, and we already have re really good lines and channels of um, getting information to these families. So we have Parent Club, a really useful website, which is well used and appreciated with a great deal of information about positive parenting. But we also have support packages in place. Um, you know, there's an increased level of health visiting. There's family nurse partnerships. Um, there's, a, there's a good um, level of support support around these families already and, and, and those families who have um, these supports in place um, should be well informed of the, of the change that's come. I don't know if you want to say anything more about the parenting, um, the ways that we get information to parents in, in Scotland um, in terms of supporting positive parenting. Mm -hmm. um, so as Minister already said, the Parent Club website is, is um, sort of some, uh, it's a resource we'd like to develop as a one-stop shop for families, which will provide a range of um, information and advice to parents, including healthy eating, sleep, but also behaviour and managing behaviour at using positive parenting techniques. And it's very much done in partnership with parents. The, the website is to develop information that parents need and behavior management is, is definitely one of the key tasks from parents. Um, we do also publish resources like Ready Steady Baby and Ready Steady Toddler. And the Ready Steady Baby publication has just recently been um, refreshed and launched. Um, and that provides a wealth of information from health professionals about um, positive parenting techniques. Okay, that's, um, that, that's very helpful. The other question I wanted to ask is an issue that I've raised, not at every evidence session, but I have raised it throughout the evidence sessions that we've had, is around the issue of restraint. And I wonder, Minister, is restraint something that you c would consider that this bill could deal with? And if not, is restraint something that is on the government's horizon to pick up at a later stage? Um, Certainly, I've noted the points. I've noted the points that you made around um, restraint in residential care settings, and I recognise that you're raising very serious um, points. I don't think that this equal protection bill is an appropriate pay place to consider this issue. Restraint is is very different from punishment. Restraint is about prevention. It's used in very defined circumstances. It's, it's about keeping an individual safe, either from themselves or, or, or individuals around um, that person safe. So it, it is, it, I, I don't think um, it, this is the appropriate place to consider it. I'm very happy to consider separately any points that you wish to raise um, around restraint with me. No, that, that's very helpful because restraint is not only used in, in um, looked after settings, it, it can also be used with um, young adults who have additional support needs. And, and while I accept that restraint is used for protection, there is a very fine line in degrees of restraint between protection and harm, and it's something that I would be keen certainly to explore um, with yourself um, at a later, a later stage. Thank you. Gail Ross. Thank you, convener. Good morning, um, Minister <coughs> Panel. Um, one of the concerns that have, has been put to us is that there may be an increase in the burden on public services, but we've heard in many evidence sessions that in countries that have already implemented this, there's been very little increase, if any, in prosecutions. Do you see any increased burden on public services coming as a result of this bill? No, I, I would agree. I mean, I think the evidence from around the world has been quite convincing that there isn't an increase in, in prosecutions and there isn't an increase in burden. Um, and in fact, I thought the evidence from Ireland was very strong that actually they found um, that the change in legislation wasn't anywhere near as dramatic as they had foreseen it to be. And actually, it really just fit with where parents were at that time. One of the aims of this bill is to um, try and encourage uh, a cultural change. Um, do you think that 
the legislation is the right way to do it because we've also heard evidence that if we did an education and public awareness raising campaign, that may be enough on its own. What's your opinion on that? So I don't think it's a, a choice of one or the other. I think that education and awareness raising is a, is a necessary um, part of the cultural change that we wish to achieve. I think it's very difficult to educate and awareness raise if the legislation is allowing you to do something else. And I think that that's where you um, see a very unhelpful um, ambiguity. And I think that you know, going down the route of education and awareness raising, plus changing the legislation so that it's absolutely clear that physical punishment is not allowed in Scotland, then I think um, then we'll see the most successful um, cultural change. Um, if for whatever reason this bill was not to pass, do the Scottish Government have any plans to go ahead with an awareness or education campaign anyway? As I said, we, we um, have a lot of information. I mean, I talked about Parent Club. We have a, a whole range of supports and information and awareness raising that are there, from Parent Club to Ready Steady Baby to the types of support that are available to parents um, in terms of, health, of professionals that they can access, health visitors, family nurse partners, ship, um, the, um, you know, the new um, information around perimetal perinatal mental health, that new strategy, all of these supports in place around um, families al already. I think it would be difficult to achieve the cultural change without making the law absolutely clear. Um, I don't think you can have an educational strategy which says one thing and a, and a law which says another. Thank you. Um, we, we heard in one of our evidence sessions of um, an organisation that works with families and, and often single mothers that um, don't have English as a first language. And um, it was put to us that the bill, if it wasn't backed up with the right amount of um, awareness raising in, in that sector, might have an adverse effect on these women who are already under um, quite an amount of stress already. Um, how would we reach them? Well, this, certainly the last time we brought out written guidance around, um, I think it's in 2003, that was published in um, a number of different languages. More than happy to look at that, and I would like to think that the implementation group will pick up on those issues. We are keen to um, ensure that every parent in Scotland um, recognises that the law is, is, is changing and um, that physical punishment is, is not um, acceptable in Scotland. I think it was also around the um, lack of interpreters in various languages and things like that. So you mentioned the implementation group. Could you tell us a little bit more about that, what its remit is and um, maybe the membership, etc.? cetera? Um, it's met um, two times. Um, its remit is to look at what needs to be done to implement the bill if it's enacted by, uh, by Parliament. It's looking at what guidance might be required for professionals such as um, social work. It's considering what awareness raising and marketing campaigns might be needed if the bill should be enacted. It's got a variety of members on it. It's got Police Scotland on it. It's got Social Work Scotland on it. It's got The Crown on it, uh, Parenting Across Scotland, some other members as, as well. We are publishing the minutes on the, on the website as they're approved by the, uh, by the committee. It's had its first couple of meetings. I think the, the main points it looked at was very much what guidance might be needed for professionals about possibly mainstreaming that into other guidance, particularly for social social workers, and also beginning to think about what might be needed by way of awareness raising and, uh, and marketing campaigns, issues like that. Okay, thank you, and that um, leads me nicely into my last question. Um, John Finney, in his financial memorandum, estimated that the cost of a campaign would be around three hundred thousand pound. But the Scottish Government's estimated costs is £20,000. That's quite a big discrepancy. Can you maybe explain how you got to that figure? I think, um, I think there are always going to be differences in, in costs. I think that we are reasonably confident that we already have strong lines of communication there and that um, it would be reasonable to consider using those channels of communication initially um, to raise awareness. Um, I was interested to know, I mean, there are a range of views on this and we'll certainly take on board what's discovered by the implementation group during the passage of the bill. I was 
also very interested to note that your um, Gillian Van Turnout said that there was actually no budget in Ireland um, to uh, raise awareness around this issue. Okay, thank you. Minister, um, can I ask, the planned implementation is 12 months um, from Royal Assent. Are you confident that that's achievable? Um, yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good quick answer. And um, <laughs> finally, um, can you foresee any circumstances where the Scottish Government might have to use their delegated powers in relation to this bill? <clears throat> um, no, I don't think so. Can anyone? Okay. No. Okay. Thank you. Did you have a? I did. Just quick summary. Yeah. Okay. Just, okay. just following on from the discussion, Minister, we had about public opinion, and you're right to say in your opening remarks that 92% of people in this country do agree that adults should enjoy the same, or children should enjoy the same protection from assault as adults. But when you spell out to them that that means parents won't be able to physically punish their children, things change quite dramatically in the polling. It's all very, uh, it all comes down to the wording, um, and. Like other countries who've gone before, say Belgium, had a very similar public resistance to legislation like this. I think they were 75% were roughly similar against uh, a ban on smacking as it's seen, even though that's not necessarily what this bill does. Do you think that we as politicians should be worried by that? Should we always follow public opinion in the policy we devise, or should we seek to lead it? Uh, yeah, that's an, uh, I mean, that's an interesting question. I think that... Um, <laughs> I wouldn't agree with you that the public opinion is so out of step with what we're aiming to achieve here. I was very interested when I read the papers last night accompanying the bill that 80 odd percent of parents um, of small children do not believe that smacking is an effective disciplinary tool. I don't think that this bill is, is wildly out of step with public opinion. And I think that the important thing for us to do is to bring clarity to the situation, to say absolutely physical punishment is not acceptable in Scotland. The body of evidence around physical punishment of children is that it is harmful. It's harmful to their emotional uh, um, and mental health. It is... Um, not an effective discipline strategy and to put forward strong alternative positive discipline strategies that are effective and empower parents to use them. Thank you. Oliver Mandel had a brief supplementary. Yeah, no, there, there, Minister, you used, uh, yeah, you used two different forms of words through the session, but there you said that physical punishment is, is not acceptable and that's what the bill shows, but I can come back to the point. Does it? Is there a difference between being acceptable and being legal? Does this? Does this bill ban uh, smacking? So this bill doesn't introduce a new criminal offence. What it does is remove a defence. So I don't know. Yeah, I, that, 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 that doesn't sound very clear. That doesn't sound very clear to me. I think you're turning on the head of a pin here. I think it is. So clear. if I'm turning on the head of a pin, pin sorry. Wait, through the chair, and we'll listen to the answers. <laughs> Sorry, convener. Um, I, I, I know it's on the head of a pin, but it, it, for people who go to court um, and, and who go through these kinds of processes, decisions are often made on the head of a pin, um, if, if, if that's the measure of it. So I, I, I just want to know the, the, the kind of honest answer. Does, does this bill, as currently drafted, ban smacking um, or, or ban behaviour sort of commonly known as smacking? Um, or does it just say that it is... Does it just point the direction, people in a direction that, that that's not acceptable? So this bill removes the defence which says that there is um, reasonable, that it was reasonable chastisement. We've discussed already that there may, Sorry. there may be, I'm not going to pass comment on individual cases. There may well be circumstances that have to be taken into account um, it, it, on you know, the decision on whether to prosecute um, around the circumstances that were in place at the time, whether there's a defence of, for example, um, you know, there's a number of other defences that can be used. The defence of reasonable chastisement will be removed, and I think that that will clearly state that physical punishment of children in Scotland is not um, accepted. So, so does that mean, in your view, that physical punishment will, to all intents and purposes, amount to, to assault? 
Is that what you, you would hope the courts would interpret? As I've said, we are not creating a new offence. <laughs> so physical punishment already amounts to assault and there is a defence in place that can be used. We are removing that defence. I think it's clear. OK, thank you. Minister, um, thanks to you and your officials this morning for your evidence. We'll suspend briefly to allow um, panels to change over. Welcome back, everybody, and can I welcome panel two, um, John Finney, MSP, member in charge, supported by Stephen Den, researcher, Nick Hawthorne, senior assistant clerk, non-government bills unit, and Katrina McCallum, Office of the Solicitor, Scottish Parliament. 
Um, John Finney, can I invite you to make a statement of up to five minutes, please? Thank you very much, Deed Convener. I will be brief. And it is to uh, thank yourself uh, for the, and the committee for the invitation to, to give evidence on the Member's Bill. And I would also like to thank the mitty, committee uh, for the diligent way they've gone about uh, examining the issue and for the support they've had from, from the team. Um, and um, I'm also grateful to the Scottish Government for their support for my bill and to the Minister personally for her support since the initial consultation in 2017. I'd also like to, to thank the people with me, Nick Hawthorne of the Parliament's NGB unit and his colleague Kate Blackman, uh, Katrina McCallum from the Office of Solicitor to the Scottish Parliament and indeed my colleague uh, Stephen Dane, my office manager, for all for their tireless work. I was initially approached after the election um, by a coalition um, of children's charities, Bernardo's uh, Scotland, NSPCC, Children First and the Children's Commissioner to consider taking forward a member's bill in a simple proposal. And that proposal was that children should have the same legal protection from assault as adults. And I'm immensely grateful for their support and encouragement since then. The growing body of international evidence shows that the physical punishment of children is harmful to their development and not an effective means of discipline. My intention is uh, uh, bringing forward this bill is to bring clarity to the law by removing the defence of reasonable chastisement, excuse me, sometimes referred to as justifiable assault, and to send a clear message that the physical punishment of children is not acceptable. I believe that this bill is a vital step in ensuring that we see the necessary change in our culture as a society, much in the way that the smoking ban was a necessary legislative step in making Scotland a healthier place to live. My bill aims to bring Scotland into line with what is becoming the international standard in 54 countries, from Sweden in 1979 to Ireland in 2015, Nepal last year, and this year, uh, Jersey. I'm sure all parties will agree that we should work together to ensure that Scotland becomes the best country in the world for children to go up in, and I strongly believe that if passed, my bill would play a vital part in making that aim come to pass. I'm pleased to note the comments from the Minister uh, uh, that the Scottish Government is working closely uh, with organisations to ensure that if the bill is passed, it would run smoothly. Thank you, Convener and Members, and welcome questions. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, can I ask you about um, public opinion? Um, we've had um, on our visits as a committee um, to various grandparents groups, parents groups, and the work we've done with um, children and young people, opinion has been mixed. And there's also um, those who campaign quite um, passionately um, against this change in the law. Can I ask for your reflections on, on why you think that is the case? Well, it's certainly um, an issue that draws strong uh, opinions for, for various reasons. Uh, I think a number of people have touched on the notion that this is some sort of historic judgment in them, their parents. and uh, um, It also often does depend on the, how the question is framed. In respect of the particular proposal, excuse me, 75% of the respondents supported this. For instance, there was a significant survey, 70,000 plus members, young people in Scotland were consulted by youth parliament, way up in the high 80% that supported that. So it is how the question's asked, and sometimes if you ask, do you think that children should receive uh, the same protection from assault as adults, then overwhelmingly the majority of people say that is the case. So it is about the framing. Thank you. Oliver Mundell. Thank you, uh, Convener. I'm interested just in the, the method that you chose to, to bring in the bill, um, and I guess fundamentally uh, why, if you think that physical uh, punishment is uh, wrong, uh, why you didn't choose to make physical punishment unlawful and make that clearer you know, on the face of the bill. Well, I, I was present in the previous session and, and heard your comments, uh, Mr Mundell, and, and I think we do require clarity. I think this delivers clarity. There's widespread public awareness already of this proposal. And indeed, as I think you've heard previously, many people think that already it's illegal to, to, to smack children. So it is building in this. And I think you're entirely right to say that people need to understand the parameters. Well, the parameters should be that it's very clear that the physical punishment of children is not acceptable. The issues that have raised concern to many people about children running onto the road about boiling water and all these issues. I think these are things that can be uh, provided clarity uh, elsewhere. As, you, as you'll know, as a parliamentarian, there's often a clamour to have different things on the face of a bull. I don't think that that's something that requires to be in the face of a bull. This is dealing with a very specific issue. Um, um, a defence to a common law 
crime that's in statute, and that defence is removed by the deletion of that element in statute. And I think, think that that is a very clear proposal. Um, I, I guess my question would be why in, in uh, New Zealand, when they chose to do this, uh, did, did they make it clear that there was nothing in, in law um, that, that, that justified uh, the, the, the use of corrective force? What, why, why would you not want to, if, if, if that's your, your belief and intention and uh, you want to make it clear for parents, what, 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 why would you not uh, want, to, want to, to make that clear with this bill and leave what, um, you know, albeit uh, the, the Law Society described as a small grey area or in the previous panel, uh, we saw you know, two legal representatives of the Scottish Government uh, and I think the Minister herself say that there could be these difficult cases or you know, a, a sort of suggestion that it would be for courts to decide. Do you not think it would be better for Parliament to just make that, that clear? So, I, I, I don't wish to appear pedantic. I don't know what you mean by the, fair, the term correct force. Correct, corrective force. Corrective I think, force. Which I think, I think is their equivalent to, to physical punishment, I guess, where the, the force would be used to correct behaviour. Well, well I, I think it's interesting, and of course I, I come armed with lots of information, uh, including references to, to different legal systems. The reality is that I can only deal with the system that's here. My obligation as a parliamentarian is to deal with here. I think there is clarity, and I think it would be unhelpful, particularly... Um, given your, your very helpful comments earlier on about you not seeing a role for physical punishment of children, to suggest other than that there's there would be clarity coming out of this. But of course, pivotal to that is the public awareness. And there's a lot of support. You heard some of the brief comments about the support that is available already. Um, there's, there's lengthy, uh, a lengthy document I have here covering the very targeted support that's appropriate and would continue and would pick up on this proposal if it were adopted by Parliament. What, what, what concerns me as a, as, as a legislator and a member of, of, of Parliament, um, I, I guess, is, is, is not knowing uh, what, what the threshold would be. And I guess I have a bit of, a bit of, di a bit of discomfort. Well, you, so you think the threshold is zero, so all physical punishment uh, would, would, would be assault yes, indeed. in your understanding? Yes. OK, well, that, that, that's, that's helpful. Because um, I, 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 I think when I hear uh, the Scottish Government's legal team say uh, that it would be up for the court to, to decide uh, where the threshold was. I, I find that concerning, or for court in case law to determine, because at the moment we don't, we don't have any. Well, I, th I think with respect, uh, Mr Mundell, we're maybe talking about slightly different things here. There's judgments being made on a daily base, basis by uh, um, uh, professionals, be that a teacher at a school, social work department, Police Scotland, and I think you heard compelling evidence of how these organisations work together. There are judgments made on interests, and the interest of the child is at the foremost. So I, I think there is clarity, and, uh, but of course that needs to be made clear, um, there needs to be reinforcement of that. OK, well, that's helpful. Thank you very much. Um, Alex Hamilton. Thank you, Convener. Before I get into the similar line of questioning I gave to the Minister, um, I'd like to, first of all, thank John Finney for being here today and indeed for, for this bill. He knows I'm a fellow traveller in this area and I'd like to thank him also for the way he's conducted, the inclusive way he's conducted his uh, approach to this bill. Um, just on, before I go into that line of questioning, I'd like to just touch on uh, a supplement, brief supplemental on Oliver Mundell's last line of questioning, and that you mentioned the word interests about weighing up interests. Um, I agree with you that the, the threshold should be zero; that physical punishment should always be viewed as assault. But is it fair to say that a, ju a second judgment is then taken by the police or the procurator fiscal as to whether it is in the public interest to raise a criminal proceeding against a parent who has been accused of assault in that way? Again, there's a list of proportionality. It relates to the uh, the duration of the issue, the the, the, the state, well, the status of the, the time, um, the impact that it has. So there are a whole load of factors that are considered all the time on a daily basis by the authorities. And you would also agree that in other jurisdictions which have already brought this uh, this restriction in on um, physical punishment, that the application of that seems to be quite light touch, and there haven't been huge amounts of prosecution in, say, New Zealand or Belgium or other countries? No, not at all. Quite the reverse. There's, been, there's generally been a, a slight increase in reporting, and you would understand that. Uh, and and I'd, I don't think that's problematic. But not in prosecutions, no. And it is back to what the purpose of this is. This isn't The purpose of this isn't to prosecute people. The purpose is to send a clear direction of travel. 
It's happened previously, and I think future generations will wonder that this establishment discussed whether it was or wasn't appropriate to strike a blow to the head of a toddler with a, an implement, for instance. That would seem strange. It is a progression of that. It's to send a clear direction of travel, but appropriate support with that. Thank you for that. Um, so can I ask about rights? Um, obviously, we know the government has a commitment to incorporate the UNCRC or the principles of the UNCRC into Scots law, um, as stated by the First Minister in the programme for government speech. Um, is it, would it be compatible um, to not make this change and incorporate the UNCRC? Would the UNCRC say, yes, Scotland, you have incorporated the UNCRC while we're still punishing children physically in the home? It would be completely incompatible, and we, we have heard of the international concern um, about the position in Scotland, indeed elsewhere in the UK and some other countries. So it would be incompatible, and uh, it's for that reason I hope that Parliament will pass it. Thank you. And do you recognise the tension that exists between children's rights and parents' rights, or, or a, a parents' right to family life and to bring their children up in the way that they see fit? Well, I understand that people perceive there to be attention. I think we all have rights. I don't think there's a hierarchy. And, and very simply, you know, and back to the issue of how, how the, the, uh, the whole um, issue here is framed, if you say to people, do you think that the most vulnerable people in our communities deserve um, equal protection, many would say, no, I think they deserve better protection. So um, I, I don't see the conflict that some people do with that issue, no. Thank you. If I can test some of the arguments against your bill with you directly, um, we've heard a lot about protective punishment, intervention, physical intervention and um, chastisement to prevent a child from coming to harm, whether that's the pan of boiling water from the stove or running into traffic. Are you concerned that by removing that tool of parenting, we are exposing children to harm who would, not other, who would otherwise have been protected via uh, a slap on the wrist or a, on the bum to prevent them from harming themselves? One of your earlier witnesses gave the example and, and expressed some incredulity that the response to their child running on the road would be to strike them and said, no, I'd put a protective arm around them, I would speak to them, I would reassure them. Um, I, I, I think people need to be aware in the home, there are hazards everywhere, That's a, it's the duty of, of all of us to, to, to make homes as childproof and child friendly as possible. I, I don't think there are issues around that at all. And if we agree that uh, behaviour is a product of mental process, that um, th a three-year-old um, might be physically punished um, as a tool of sanction for their behaviour or to protect them, but a, an adult with incapacity who had a mental age of three would not. Do you recognise that as incongruous, that we, we shouldn't apply something just be, because somebody's smaller um, and less developed than the adult? It, absolutely. And it also causes confusion and it sends a very peculiar message. And I think you've heard previously from professionals that if, you, if the answer to a difficulty, whatever that difficulty might be, is to apply some violence, and that's what, what smacking, as people would call it, is, then it sends a very peculiar message to children who are at the most formative part. Because this is about child development, it's about brain development, and it's about the signals and messages that are sent by parents, carers, and indeed by the community. Thank you. And in, you mentioned uh, violence there, and there is a debate in this, uh, in the evidence that we've heard between the causal link between smacking in the home, physical punishment in the home, and violence, either domestic violence, Scottish Women's Aid cite the link, uh, as do the police, and indeed violence on our streets where children exhibit learned behaviour to one another in terms of the use of sanction as a tool of coercion or uh, uh, re um, sanction or, or revenge. Do you, but then the corollary to that as well was what we heard from Professor Lars Alia from America last week that, uh, that actually he cites a potential causal link between the smacking ban in Sweden and an increase in assaults by young people. Where do you sit on that debate? Well, I, I think the least said about last week's evidence from that professor, the better. I understand the committee's in receipt of a, a, a very direct letter from a, a fellow academic in North America. Um, confining her comments to, as I understand, uh, the four most outrageous assertions made. Th th there's no credibility associated with that. I think it does touch, and, and I could leave it there, but I, I, I want to say it does touch on something that um, is a concern about the bill, and that is people's perceptions of the historic application of, uh, of smoking, uh, of um, uh, smacking. And the assertion made that people would accept that smoking causes harm now, but it does, doesn't mean that if you've ex been exposed to smoking as a child that you're going to get lung cancer in later life. So, um, but um, 
it's very much the case that if you are going to get lung cancer in later life, it's very unlikely that you have had that level of exposure. So it, it, there, there is a connection there, and it's appropriate to, to say that the people who have said that aren't just the academics. It is important when you have people like Scottish Women's Aid, when you have people like uh, the Violence Reduction Unit, who are at the front line of uh, dealing with issues of violence in our communities. I think we should listen. And final question for me, Mr Finney. You joined us on our road trip to Skye and you heard the evidence, uh, particularly from the faith communities in the west of Scotland, that uh, for them they regard the parents' right to physically chastise their child as an article of faith and they cite scripture to defend that right. Um, if we were to remove that right, does, is that an assault on their religious freedoms? It, well, certainly it's not. I, I mean, I, I respect people's rights to hold views. I thought the evidence you heard from the Reverend Nino of the Church of Scotland uh, and from the, the Quaker representative was very compelling. And it said it is about interpretation. I wouldn't wish to be offensive to anyone, but I think that there is a point where no one's individual views trump the collective view of the community. Thank you. OK. Um, Fulton McGregor. Uh, thanks, Convener, and um, uh, good morning uh, to, to John Finney. And can I just say, uh, like Alex Cole Hamilton did before, uh, I'll start my line of question. Well done uh, for bringing uh, this bill through and, and taking the bold move um, to, to do so. Um, I wanted to ask just a similar questions asked to the Minister um, earlier, and I know you were in that session, uh, Mr Finney. So it's just to, to ask, what impact do you think, if, if, your, if your bill is passed by Parliament, what impact do you think it will have on current child protection arrangements and processes? Well, I think you heard compelling evidence last week from a frontline uh, um, practitioner, indeed the, the gentleman responsible for looking at the daily reports in the city of Edinburgh, our capital city, who said it will have no impact. You also heard that from the Chief Superintendent of Police Scotland, who had a previous involvement in that role. Um, deal, um, the the um, frontline services deal with issues on a daily basis. This is another aspect that they'll they'll have to address, uh, but it is it is going to be about the uh, support that's put in place, and there's a lot of support out there. And I, I know you touched on this earlier, uh, Mr Finney, but is it fair to say then that your bill isn't, uh, doesn't have the intention to increase uh, state intervention in family life, if you like, or um, prosecutions, as, be, as has been asked earlier, and it is to change the culture? And it, it is, and it is to show that the Parliament has listened to the overwhelming evidence the, the evidence that we heard from uh, Dr Anya Hellman, um, the, the compilation of a, a vast amount of research equally protected that says that in the formative years of a, of a child, any exposure to, to violence of any will have a negative effect. Now, a lot of um, parliamentarians talk about adverse childhood experiences, and that's now become everyday parlance. This would have to be regarded in a similar way. So I think it would be very strange if Parliament didn't respond. Excuse me. To that overwhelming research. Yeah, thanks very much, Mr. Finney. My, my other question is, um, and, and you'll have heard it in the last session and uh, in the various others, because I know that you've attended uh, uh, every single um, evidence session. But it's about something that we heard first heard in Sky about uh, if this bill is introduced um, or is passed, sorry, that it might uh, have a more disproportionate uh, effect on uh, families who are already vulnerable. We heard that first in Sky with some evidence towards that, but actually the evidence that we've heard since um, in the line of question it hasn't, um, it hasn't backed up. Have you got any views on that? Well, the, the, the concern that um, many uh, academics have expressed is that physical punishment is sometimes used um, by people under pressure, and there's no doubt we have families under considerable pressure for a number of reasons. These are the very families who are targeted for specific additional support. Um, by social work services, by health boards. And I, I think um, it would also be wrong to suggest that as a particular geographic area or social strata that punish their children by, uh, physically. Um, that, that's across the board. But um, you know, I, I have no concerns that the targeted support that's there can't be racked up if that's required. Um, there's a broad range of support from something as simple as someone being able to go online or pick up a phone and seek advice, peer online, to very targeted support for young mothers. Thank you. Annie Wells. Thank you, <clears throat> convener. Good morning, Mr Finney. Good morning, panel. Um, I've just got the one question to, to ask yourself, Mr Finney. It's, we've heard from other witnesses, and like other witnesses, do you think that this bill shouldn't criminalise parents? 
Well, the, the intention of the bill is to send a direction of travel about child welfare and child upbringing, and it's not to, to criminalise parents. Um, at the moment, parents could be criminalised for using excessive force on a child. This is to send guidance and put support in place to, to say that there are better ways, because all the evidence tells us there are better ways. So it's not about criminalising anyone, it's about supporting children. Thank you, Convener. Um, Mary Fee. Thank you, um, Convener, and good morning, Mr um, Finney. Um, I wanted to ask you about um, equality groups, and, and you've heard that it's a question that I've asked on a number of um, evidence sessions. But rather than ask the specific question I asked the Minister, can I perhaps ask you, Mr Finney, to um, give us some information about the equality groups that, that su support people that you spoke to while you were taking evidence. I know you said that you spoke to a number of children's organisations, but did you speak to the organisations that specifically provide support to families who have children that require additional support? We, we've had engagement with a, a considerable number of people and I uh, understand the particular pressures that associate themselves with some communities. I think we heard earlier about uh, the challenges there might be, cultural challenges about people who've maybe moved to Scotland uh, from a place where um, certain levels of punishment are, are, are appropriate. Uh, also, um, you know, I've, I've listened to the, the evidence about groups, uh, parents for children with additional needs. And uh, I, th I think it's clear that, uh, you know, uh, we need to be sensitive to the different ways it might be required to put forward the support but I don't think there's any, any group that's going to be disadvantaged, which is what equality legislation is about. It's about ensuring that everyone is uh, treated um, equally. Um, and to do that, of course, you don't necessarily treat people the same way. You might have to put additional mechanisms in place to support, for instance, the phrase hard to reach communities. Mm -hmm. So I, I just want to be quite specific. Did you then speak to organisations, for example, the Autistic Society, that, that support mm -hmm. families um, of, of children who, who can be quite challenging and difficult? And were there any issues raised that, that there may be a higher prevalence of perhaps physical punishment in particular groups? I personally haven't spoken to that particular group, but I'm aware, as, as I'm sure as a, an MSP, but of the many issues that associate itself with, with, with autism. And we are um, liaising closely with the, the children's charities, which you know, have regard to a whole range of issues, including that, that uh, autism. Uh, and w was there any discussion around the, the, the use of restraint? And, and I accept that this is not the, the, the legislation to include um, any, anything in regards to, to restraint, but in the discussions that you had with children's organisations, was there any discussion about concerns around the use of restraint? It is something that comes up. Uh, and you're right, I, I, I don't think this is the vehicle for it because we are talking invariably about institutions for where um, different um, rules and regulations apply. And there's no doubt, no doubt that however well-meaning restraint can sometimes move over into uh, uh, the situation where it could be reviewed, uh, considered as, as assault. So th these are things that, yes, that have come up in our engagement, yes. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you. Okay, Gail Ross. Thank you, Convener. Um, good morning, Mr Finney and your panel. Um, what steps do you think that the Scottish Government should take to promote awareness and education should this bill pass? Well, there's been some discussion about the, the wide disparity between the, 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 the figure we came up with in the financial memorandum, which was an average of a, a, a range of um, campaigns that had taken place in it came out at 303,000, so we called it 300,000, to be fair. Um, um, but there is also an extensive, I think it's entirely fair to, to, to see what the Minister says, that uh, there's an extensive network there already around which information is relayed to parents, and there's no reason why that couldn't be, be, be used. So, um, sorry, so I'll repeat your question. Uh, um, <laughs> what, what steps do you think that the Scottish Government should take to promote... Um, promote the bill if it passes and educate parents that there are other methods of discipline. They don't need to resort to smacking. Well, if, if we go back, the, the, the Scottish Government's position at the moment is that it doesn't support um, a, a physical punishment of children as, a, as an effective means of, of disciplining children. Uh, but we have heard, and indeed you've heard from, from a number of witnesses, that um, 
a campaign alone isn't sufficient. It, it has to be backed up with a legislative framework. And I think it's important that um, there will be awareness. The implementation group that the Minister touched on is key to this. It is about social work services. It is about other, um, the, the police as well, the, the, the role that, um, hopefully minimal role that the Crown would play in this. But there's also the public um, public campaign, because there needs to be public awareness. Some of the concerns that will be shared with us sometimes are about how a, how a member of the public would react if they were to see someone perhaps disciplining their child in public. Thank you. I see you've been listening intently because you just answered about four of my follow-up <laughs> questions there. <and> one. <laughs> um, have you had any interaction with the implementation group at all, or is that separate from what you're doing? Well, well no, I, I, I think I don't want to be in any way presumptive of the parliamentary process and uh, I think it's important that there is that separation. Uh, we are aware and we are aware who's involved and, and, and uh, you know, be very happy to engage with them. But um, it's for Parliament to decide whether it wishes to, to progress this legislation and uh, um, hopefully it will. And if it does, then I would be very happy to engage with them formally thereafter. Thank you. OK, nobody else is um, catching my eye, so that... Um brings us to the to the end of, of this session. Thank you um, for your evidence. Um, our next meeting will be on the 4th of April when we'll consider the evidence we've already heard at stage one in private. The committee's already agreed to consider evidence in private and so now I move into private session and ask the public gallery to clear. <laughs>